Hey, what is going on? Today we are talking about weatherproofing your exterior electrical. And this is one of the most extreme ways that I do it, but I hope you enjoy it and let's go. So I'm starting out with these Arlington boxes. This is what I'm gonna be using for receptacles outside and you can use them for some other things, but mainly it's just for the receptacles, front porch, back porch, and near the AC unit. Taking out the half inch knockouts and I'm gonna ream them out so my uh, half inch grommet goes in there nice and easy because a lot of times there's a little bit of chunk in there. I have two three and a quarter pancakes and that is going to be for the coach lights on the garage and I'm just taking out these extra screws that I don't need because I won't use those pressure connectors. Taking out the half inch knockouts out and I have the grommets for those too and I'm just prepping everything in one station because prep is everything with almost anything you do in construction and I'm just making sure I got everything. I'm putting them together and putting the ground screws in the three and a quarter pancakes because you need a ground screw for any kind of metal box. And then I'm using five sixteenths hex heads, inch and a half long, I think that's what it is. But I'm just making sure I got enough for all of them, setting them aside. And now this is the flashing tape that you usually use for windows and doors. So we're cutting some long pieces. They're about, I don't know, 14 inches long. I'm just guessing, just making sure that they're long enough. And then I'm gonna cut some other pieces about eight inches to 10 inches long for the sides. So you'll have three pieces of that flashing tape for each one. I'm just guessing how many I have, just making sure I have enough. <clears throat> so we're just gonna pass them out at all the locations that we're gonna need because it's gonna every location for the electrical is gonna need. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. I can could, I could use it. Anyway, so just throwing it out, all the electrical locations, and then I'm passing out my other material, the receptacle boxes, and pancakes. And then these right here are the flashing pieces that I'm using. Those blue ones are for the pancakes, and if you have vinyl siding, you're gonna need octagon boxes, which are different. They're a little bit, they're a little bit harder. And carrying a garbage box around with you makes things a lot easier because the wind starts blowing and it'll pull those little paper pieces all over the place. So I put the box on just a little bit just to see where I need to cut that top line, and then I do the two on the angle. So before we go anywhere with the tape, we're just gonna make sure we get this receptacle done and make sure you're not hitting the wire with the screws. Uh, so anyways, just cut in the receptacle and then we're gonna start with taping the sides first. So just one side and then two sides. And then you want to make sure that this piece reaches to the end of both pieces of tape, which is well over right here. And I guess what it is, if water ever gets down the wall behind the siding, you wanna make sure that it's funneled and comes out right there in the middle. So we're using um, green tape, Tyvek tape. It's usually just for like the house wrap. And you can find them on the job sites just lying around. They leave extra. This is for the water heater. I have a power wire and I have a signal wire. So you can go into the garage, you can change the temperature of your gas water heater. But whatever it is electrical, they make some flashing for it. So same thing with this little plastic piece. One on the side, one on the other side, and one on the top. And then I like to, whenever I get done with these ones right here, with these uh, low volt wires, I like to roll them up just to get them off the ground or get them out of the way so nobody's getting caught on them and trying to yank anything out so they don't get ruined. Okay, with these two right here, this is a receptacle and for a disconnect for the AC unit. But I put them a little too close together, but I kept it in the video just to show you what I would do if it was. Like I wouldn't go on the other side and I wouldn't re-drill it and move it. I would just push through because this is kind of um, a little bit extra work for weatherproofing. A lot of people don't want this, but I do have some builders that want the full extreme. 
So I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna pretend like that's not even there and just cut right through it. So putting the box on a little bit, see where my line is. And now I'm just gonna slice right through it. So once again, just pushing the wall up, make sure it's straight, sending them screws through and cutting it in, getting it out the way. Getting all the paper out. Don't want any of that paper in the box. And this is pretty much it for almost everything when you're doing this weatherproofing stuff. It's just one after the other. It's either got um, like a specific piece for it or not. It looks a little janky, but it kinda, kinda looks cool too. So we're just continuing on, doing what we can, picking up the garbage as we go. You don't wanna come back. See, in this ground wire for the gas, I put it up a little bit higher because this company likes this weather flashing on it. Like you don't, you can't stub it out the same with the gas in this situation. You're just gonna have to bring it down whenever you go to trim it out after the siding's up. Just as usual. All right. And then with these three and a quarter pancakes, they actually make specific flashing for them. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and trim off a little bit, and slide it up on there. So, and this is just another situation where like before you send them screws through, you wanna know where your wire is because you don't wanna send a wire, you don't wanna send a screw through that wire and then it go unnoticed by the time you get into the trim out and then you get a trip and breaker. So we're tightening down that ground screw first. Like I think that that's important with these pancakes and then you're sending those screws through because it's a lot easier to put that ground screw down before your hex heads go in. And we're just doing the same thing but just a little bit bigger and popping those staples out. These ones are a little tough to go on, so I use my hammer. And the same as we've been doing, you just need a little bit longer pieces and they don't have to go all the way to the bottom either. This piece I cut a little bit short. I thought about doing something about it. Then I said, fuck it, send it. So back with the green tape, doing the corners and that's it for the coach light. And I don't know if you can tell, but I get a little bit of camera shy. And to me, this is kind of like a stupid video, but I get that a lot of people would like to see like how we actually protect our wires on the exterior. I know I heard like a couple comments, of people talking like, oh, well, you're not protecting. I don't know. I don't know what the hell a lot of people was talking about in the comments, but it is what it is. Things are different in my area. So anyways, once again, doing the same crap. Okay, doorbell is going to be a little bit tighter. Might not be able to get those angles you want on the side, but it's mo it's mostly just the effort that matters. So we're putting our piece up there. We're taking the sides the best that we can. And a 
lot of builders want that doorbell button in the um, door trim but the reason I have it off of the door trim is this builder puts in ring doorbell kits for every house. So it's a little bit off and you want it to be a little bit high just so like you're not just looking at somebody's balls when you're looking at the camera. So you want to raise it up a little bit and, and see more of like a chest head height. But, I mean, I, that's a little bit extra. Make sure this box is straight because once it's there, it's there forever. Cutting it in. I hate it when people do not cut in their outside receptacles. It's so annoying to do that. I don't carry crimp sleeves on the trim out. It just it bothers me. But anyways, my work won't be like that. Alright, this is for the media panel. Um, they sell these little plastic pieces with bigger holes. And uh, it but it's just basically the same thing. Just moving on. And I do have it fire foam on the inside too. And then right here, this uh panel and meter base area. I'm just doing the same thing but on a bigger scale. I'm gonna need some longer pieces for the sides and a really long piece for the top. Just takes you a second. Just gotta doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be in there. Make sure you're covering up all those tabs if you're using vinyl blocking. And if you're not pinning up your meter in the rough end, then you don't have to worry about this. You just gotta do your service wire that's sticking outside of the house. And look, here, I messed up. You can see that paper. Oh. Kinda of pissed off. But anyways, I'll just cut another piece. Just add another piece up top, tucking that paper back up. Not a big deal. And there you have it. And that's the it. It's really all there is to it. Ain't nothing else to say. Nice and simple video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.